بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على حبيبنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد One of the problems that, that has and more so now affected uh, the community of Muslims the believers in, in our blessed Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is an inability to recognize that believers amongst themselves can have differences. The inability to recognize the, that believers can have differences has resulted to a disease of sectarianism. Where nobody can, where nobody can agree to disagree. When we look at the, the blessed life of the Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, who was sent to unite hearts, who was sent to bring hearts together. We see that he, peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him, tolerated differences. He tolerated differences. And when we, when we, when we say that the, that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, tolerated differences, we're not just speaking about differences in, in legal matters, which is what, what's normally referred to, although that's also important to, to recognize that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, peace and blessings be upon him, did not come to bring people on one particular mode or manner of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He set down broad-based principles and he allowed the Sahaba and those who came after them, his companions and those who came after them, to understand to understand matters in different manners. So we have the famous incident when he, peace and blessings be upon him, sent a group of companions to, to pursue a tribe, Banu Mustaliq. And he gave them an instruction to pray Asr when the when they arrived at Banu Mustaliq. And on the journey, the companions, the blessed companions, they differed in understanding the injunction that the Prophet, peace upon him, had given them. So some of them, because the sun was about to set, some of them decided to pray. They understood, after, even though they had not got to Banu Mustana, they understood the instruction of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to be that they would arrive at Banu Mustana before Maghrib would come in. So they prayed, despite the fact that their action seemed, or not seemed, but clearly went against the literal injunction of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Others amongst them, other amongst them did not pray and they took the injunction literally and they and they delayed their prayer, asked prayer into Maghrib time such that they prayed their asr when they arrived at Banu Mustalaq, even though even though it was Maghrib time. If you if we just for a moment stop and reflect over this, stop and think about this. Because such a situation could not happen now. We have a group of companions who prayed whilst another group did not pray. A group of companions prayed, but another group did not pray. The second group who did not pray, delayed their prayer into Maghrib time, and prayed at Abban al Now, if for example you have a group of Hanafis, traveling with a group of Shafi'is, and the Shafi'is, based upon their method, will combine, combine the prayer of travelers, and the Hanafis do not join them and say that according to the understanding of our Imams, our Imams understanding of the Sunnah of the Messenger we do not combine prayers because of the injunction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salata kanat ala mu'minina kitab al-mawbuta that prayer is prescribed at set times upon the believers when we look at that now people will look at that and say look the Muslims are divided, they can't pray together you've got these Hanafis here are not praying, the Shia are praying Exactly that same scenario happened amongst the Sahaba. They were not once to condemn each other. Even though you had a group of companions who prayed Asr and another group who didn't pray, they did not condemn each other. What did they do? They did what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us all to do. Ya ladina amanu, atiya Allah, atiya Rasul wa ulil amri minkum. O believers, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those with authority over you. Faytanaza'atum fi shaykh farudduhu ila Allah wa Rasul. If you dispute over a matter, if you differ over a matter, refer it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's exactly what they did. They went back to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, referred to him, and he did not say either of them was wrong. He allowed for them to differ on this matter. 
So just as the companions, the blessed companions differed and respected each other's right to differ, and the Prophet did not confirm one over the other, he confirmed the difference, he accepted the difference. We need to tolerate such differences amongst Muslims. That's an example of a legal difference. But we can even go beyond that. The Prophet the blessed, the blessed Messenger came to unite hearts, had unbelievers in his ranks, and, and not just any old unbelievers, the worst type of unbelievers, Munafiqeen. He had hypocrites in his ranks. And he saw the lives and he peace and blessing be upon him, knew, knew the hypocrites amongst them, he knew their names. He didn't spread their names. He didn't give it out. He only gave it out to select companions, Sayyidina Hadith ibn Yaman, Yet despite the fact that he knew them, and despite some, some companions asking the messengers and messengers to kill them, he saw the lives and said, I do not want the unbelievers, I do not want our enemies to say that Muhammad وسلم, kills his companions. He referred to those amongst them who are hypocrites, the worst type, those who try to undermine, undermine the very religion as his companions. He was acting upon the law and upon the apparent. Those looking from the outside saw them as his companions. And all they would have seen was bloodletting amongst the Muslims, Muslim killing other Muslims, as we see now. As we see now. We see Shia killing Sunni, Sunni killing Shia, Salafis arguing with Tablighis, Tablighis and, and Diobandis, disputing with Brilvis. All of that kind of thing has nothing to do with the Messenger Sallallahu The Messenger Sallallahu had worse type of people in his ranks. Even if you fundamentally disagree with different sects within Islam, he saw the had worse sight in his ranks. They were, they were unbelievers who, who made out it that they were believers, about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ That the hypocrites are in the lowest depths of hellfire. That's the type of people. And these, these Salafis, Wahhabis, Tabliris, Diobandis, Brilis, Ikhwani, Sufis, None of them will be in the lowest levels of hellfire. They're all people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger. They may well have differences and some of those differences may well be fundamental such that we no longer consider some of them to be from the orthodox fold of Islam. But they're all people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they believe in the Messenger subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all love the Messenger subhanahu wa ta'ala in different ways. In different ways. And we respect anybody who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not excommunicate anybody. We do not try and delve and look into the hearts of, of, of other Muslims. We respect that difference. Anybody who starts trying to excommunicate, and even, even before they try to categorize and label Muslims, there's a disease in that person's heart. There's a disease in that person's heart. We ask the question, as the Prophet told the Sahabi who killed somebody who, is, who, is, who, who made you hurt, and just to defend himself, just, just to spare his own life, the Prophet said, هل لا did you split open his heart? Have you looked inside of his heart? The Prophet knew and he'd seen into the heart of the hypocrites. Yet despite that, he acted based upon the statement that they put out there, which is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So even though there may well be some hypocrites in our ranks, there may well be some people who we dislike, we dislike because of, of certain errors in their belief. We're all Muslims. We're all Muslims. We all say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We need to start learning to get on it start learning to get on with each other. We need to start getting used to the idea that it's acceptable to pray behind anybody who says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Anybody who prays behind. As the Prophet said, Sallu khalfa kulli barrin rafaqir. Pray behind every righteous believer and every sinful believer. And pray for every righteous believer and every sinful believer. So as long as somebody comes to you and says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, they're from Ahl al Qibla. They're from people they're from the believers who face the same direction of prayer as we do. And as he sort of lies and said, as he peace and blessings be upon him said, said anybody who prays our prayer, eats our meat, is from us and we're from. They have a dhimma of Allah and they have a protection from God Almighty. Just reflect over the fact that a Christian and a Jew, and particularly in the Hanif, that anybody who's not a Muslim, who lives in the Muslim land, they have a protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the message of Allah. So, so somebody who says that Allah Muhammad has more of protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the message so much. This does not mean that we are we're all going to smile and be and be lovely dovey towards each other. We have disagreements. We have disagreements. But what the Prophet came and showed us is the is the way that we differ with each other. He taught us He taught us manners and etiquettes and courtesies and different with each other. 
we may well not like somebody because he, he does not view the message so much in the same lines as us. But we're not going to call him an unbeliever because of that. We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we fear the consequence of saying anybody is not a believer. Because if that person is not a believer, as the message so much, it says, you and I become you and, you and I become non believe in the process. And our Iman is too precious. Our faith is too precious to jeopardize for the sake of trying to put somebody else into hellfire. We're not pulled off. We're not, we're not people who have a responsibility not, or a right to pass judgment over others. Our responsibility is to call people to Allah's plan as a message so much. So even if we fundamentally disagree with them, even if they say, say things that are objectionable, I'll be objectionable to us. Our responsibility is not to drive people away, it's to bring people into the vast, into the vast space that the message is so provided for people. So we need to start to begin to love other Muslims. We need to start begin to tolerate other Muslims. We need to start begin to understand that although we call people to the way what's known as Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah, the people of the Sunnah and the people of the group, and those who those who follow the transmission that's been sent down to us through the from the message so much that we accept that not everybody's going to see it in the same way and we accept that there is differences and we can tolerate that those differences and that requires knowledge it requires understanding what our way is it requires understanding the sudden of the message so much, the way the message so much. and to finish with one point something that we've taken from our teachers that anybody anybody who claims to be on the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, on the way of the messenger peace be upon him. But his call is divisive. It has nothing to do with the messenger peace be upon him. But anybody who doesn't make such a claim, doesn't claim that he's following the sunnah, doesn't claim he's following the Prophet peace be upon him, doesn't make such bold statements, bold claims. But the reality and the practical behavior of that person is that he brings hearts together, brings hearts of believers together. If that's the one who's on the sunnah, that's the one who's on the way of the messenger, peace be upon him. As the Prophet Muhammad said to say the Hennessy of Manik, the line, he said, if you're able to, when you wake up and when you go to sleep, with your heart free of any rancor or enmity towards any believer, do so because that's from my sunnah. Do so because that's from my sunnah. Clear our hearts from any type of Rancor, enmity, dislike towards any believer, have love for believers, because all believers are believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the message so much. And we close with the prayer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the Quran. Rabbana la taj'al fi qulubina ghillan lilladina. Our Lord do not place in our heart any rancor, any enmity, any hatred towards those who believe. And we have the verse in the Quran, and this is the states of the people of, of paradise whilst they're Relaxing, reclining on couches, on couches in paradise, looking at each other. Allah Subhanahu wa describes when azana ma fi sudurihim min and we will remove from their hearts any enmity that they had towards each other. Ikhwan al ala surubin mutaqabin. There will be brothers facing each other, reclining on couches. There will be a shock to many Muslims when they enter into paradise, as they see that person sat reclining on a couch facing him. You'll be looking at that person's thoughts and thinking, I thought you were in Hellfire. That brilliant that you put into Hellfire sat there smiling at you. That you've been that you've cursed forever sat there smiling at you. That Wahhabi who you've condemned to the lowest levels of Hellfire, they sat there smiling at you. Because they're all believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the message. So why is that? Alhamdulillah.